Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squirt for boxing news and views from around the internet. The Swedish heavyweight Otto Wallin is set to return to the ring on August 15th on a Showtime card. His opponent will be Travis Kaufman. Wallin has been out of the ring for the best part of a year now since his fight to Tyson Fury, which he lost. But it was a credible effort from Wallin who went in there, made it awkward and difficult for Fury and cut him open, forcing and necessitating Tyson Fury to change strategy in that fight. So some of the momentum that he had out of that fight, he's lost because they were looking to get him into some big fights. There was talk of a Dillian White one after the Fury one, but it came to nothing. Seemingly, they were asking for a bit too much for Valine services, but now he's going to be facing Travis Kaufman, who himself has been out of the ring for some considerable time, having not fought since late 2018, having lost to Luis Ortiz. So I expect that Otto Valin is going to get some rounds here. And this is actually a better fight than the one Otto Valin would have been in pre-pandemic against Lucas Brown. That fight Valin had to pull out of because of a left foot fracture. So Valin coming back from some inactivity, but also injury here. But Kaufman is a better opponent in the sense that he's more durable than the faded Brown. And in this one is going to go some rounds. So I expect it'll go the full distance. Travis Kaufman a durable hard man is going to uh, keep coming at Otto Valin, but I'd expect Valin will get the rounds in and will pick Travis Kaufman apart across 10 rounds, probably for a wide points decision, something like eight rounds to two, nine rounds to one, something like that. So I know that there will be some who will say, look, he should be in a better fight than this at this point. He's looking to climb into the sort of next step in his career and sort of uh, mix it with the guys in the top 20 something he hasn't really proven yet that he's a top 20 heavyweight he doesn't have the wins to back that up but given the inactivity and the injury for me I kind of look at this it is what it is and clearly they just want to get a fight under his belt at this point but Valine Kaufman scheduled for August the 15th on Showtime if I adjunct, but the Nigerian heavyweight has confirmed he's working with Jay Prince, and Jay Prince has also confirmed that on his social media. So Ajagba says, and you can see here on screen the post, uh, things just got real. Big thanks to Jay Prince for embracing me. It's only up from here. Thank you, God. And Jay Prince on his social media says, Welcome to the Jay Prince boxing family, Ifaya Jagba, the real Nigerian king. He hits harder than wilder. And I know there will be some people questioning that last statement, but just take it for what it is. It's a hype type statement. But this relationship, it's interesting because uh, Ifaya Jagba has been managed by Shelley Finkel. He's obviously been a PBC heavyweight and now he's working with Jay Prince. So it's a bit unclear. Does this cut across the relationship Jagba has with Shelley Finkel? And is he about to leave a PBC? Because that's one conclusion from this relationship with Prince that you can draw. That perhaps he is going to go elsewhere. And given that uh, Jay Prince does have a good working relationship with Top Rank, just recently delivered a heavyweight to them, Jarrell Miller. Obviously that didn't end well. But uh, perhaps we could see FIR Jagba moving on to new pastures in the form of of top rank in ESPN. 13-0 at the moment, a developing heavyweight. Maybe he isn't what some people thought he was going to be, but um, he's still, you know, developing. So I, I don't think we can write him off completely. Clearly a big puncher, but still quite raw. But uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens next in terms of the next steps, because clearly they've given little away in these opening posts, but perhaps he will be moving on from PBC. I guess watch this space. Meanwhile, Bob Arum says that Jarrell Miller should be banned for some years or for life. He says, I look at it this way. If a fighter takes performance enhancing drugs, getting ready to participate in a fight, then I look at it as attempted murder. What happened in New York? He didn't have a license. He tested dirty and the fight was off. When we went to the Nevada Commission to schedule a fight for him, we told the Nevada Commission, look, if he had had a license in New York, they would have given him a one-year suspension. So let's do it ourselves, keep him out for a year. They did, and he tested dirty again. Now it's up to the commission to determine the penalty, and I believe that it'll either be multi-year 
or life. If he isn't banned for life, then I believe it will be a multi-year suspension. And if you're asking me if I'd continue my top rank contract with him, the answer is not on your life. Jarrell Millet will never fight on a top rank card. Meanwhile, Miller's good friend Adam Kovnatsky is vowing to keep his weight under control following his recent loss to Robert Hellenius. Adam Kovnatsky came in at 265 pounds, which was one of his career high against Chris Ariola, which was his previous fight, and was 266 pounds for that. Although he did reveal, and this was on social media, actually in response to a comment to a tweet I'd done, that he cut 10 pounds of water weight for that Ariola fight. But he stated, definitely after the last fight, I want to make sure my weight's down. It's always a topic of conversation, which sucks because I don't think that really defines how I'll perform. But I really want to get to a certain weight. With Areola, I was a little bit heavier. I weighed in less, but I cut a lot of water weight just to make sure it was lower than it actually was. This fight, I did it more naturally. I didn't starve myself or do a weight cut. It was my natural weight, and now I'm keeping it in around the same weight, making sure that I fight again later this year or early next, that it won't be a topic of conversation, and I'll be able to focus on the fight and not losing the weight in camp. It sucks because I know to do the right stuff. This fight too, I was in great shape obviously i want a rematch and i think it might happen even though it's a wba eliminator i don't think he's going to get a shot at joshua anytime soon because joshua is trying to have bigger fights first and he might give the wba title away so i think the rematch will probably happen and in respect of the weight issue for kovnatsky it is an issue because people are looking at him going, you've been at a much lower weight in your career, say in the 240s. You've looked good at that weight. So why be in the 260s when the question of stamina is actually you know, a, a valid question at that point? Against Charles Martin, where he was also over 260, he was gassing in that fight. Even in the Hellenius fight, he was looking like he was blowing pretty heavy relatively early on. So I think the reason people talk about that, and it's not necessarily that he has to cut the figure of the body beautiful, but you know him being you know six foot two, six foot three, two hundred and sixty odd pounds, it's not an optimal weight. That's why people do ask the question. And if his gas tank is an issue at the higher weight, why wouldn't you want to bring it down? Just my thoughts on that. Jerry Forrest has reacted to his decision loss to Carlos Takam, saying on social media, close fight, but I gotta work on some things to get to that championship level. I'll be back soon and way better from all the experience I've gained from this fight. Carlos Takam, you're a great fighter, man. I learned so much in that fight about myself, about fighting a champion. I will come back a different fighter because I made that way. So I'll be back soon and better with more experience thanks to everyone that's supporting and my sponsors so jerry forrest yeah he sort of failed to fire any real shots in that fight it was uh, a unanimous decision to carlos to come 98 92 97 93 and 96 94 he did start to rally in the second half of the fight and that was something i was expecting that he'd have a stronger second half of the fight but he gave away too many rounds early sort of struck a figure in the ring as a bit of a deer in the headlights early on he wasn't able to sort of adapt to carlos to early tactics losing the early rounds and ultimately he just didn't throw enough punches even when Carlos Takam was visibly gassing in the second half of the fight. He needed to do more, but just couldn't. And just on the viewing figures for that, uh, so the ESPN telecast, it averaged 299,000 over the course of the almost three hour card, and there was a peak audience of 344,000 viewers. And these figures are much in line with the figures that ESPN and Top Rank have been posting for these comeback cards. Not great numbers, especially given there's not much sport on at the moment, and it's only around about 300,000 viewers on average. So yeah, it's uh, it, it does beg the question: Do they need to look at some of these cards? Maybe you know amalgamate so that these two a week cards into one to have stronger cards and better names to draw more people in. Because at the moment, a lot of fans just are not interested. Christopher Lovejoy, who was meant to be fighting this past weekend, has said that he's going to be back in action in two weeks. He says he's enjoying what life has to offer in San Diego. 
it's pretty nice, as he said. Lovejoy's pulled out of about five fights in the past year or so. 19-0 at the moment. He's fought mostly in club shows off TV in Tijuana. So will we get to see the real Christopher Lovejoy? Will he please stand up? And just rounding out this heavyweight news mashup video, a lot of boxing fans have been asking for a new boxing game on, you know, either PlayStation, Xbox, on all platforms. Uh, but a couple of big name heavyweights, Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, are going to be featuring in the new UFC 4 game. So see here on screen, here is a um, picture of Anthony Joshua. He's posted the image to his social media. Tyson Fury, similar as well. He's uh, saying, can't wait to see myself in the octagon in UFC 4, fire. And Dana White, the UFC president, says in relation to the new game, fans can play in top arenas as well as in backyard. This game allows you to play the top athletes in UFC history, plus legends like Bruce Lee and boxing champions Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. It's crazy how good this game is. What do you make of it all? Drop a comment loud and often. Hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.